Okay, so this is my review of the Profish Reload. This is a kayak I've been using as my dedicated offshore fishing kayak for the last five or more years. For those of you that don't know, this is the Profish Reload made in New Zealand, uh, exported all around the world, so there are Viking dealers worldwide. So the fundamentals of this kayak, it's four and a half meters long, 75 centimeters wide, 31 kilos, and has a weight capacity of 200 kilos. This is predominantly designed for offshore fishing, although it can be used for lakes and rivers. But the kayak excels in the offshore environment, and where the guys designed it, based in New Zealand, they are fishing mostly offshore, so they understand what a kayak needs for those long days on the water. The Profish Reload probably has one of the best tackle management systems I've ever seen in a kayak. This tackle pod system really is a clever idea. It's completely removable, the pod can lift in and out so you can load your tackle the night before or when you're unpacking you can throw this straight into the back of the car. This tackle pod is self-sufficient, it's got batteries, it's got transducer, fish finder, everything's contained in the pod, you can just lift it straight out by pulling out one pin. I'm running two pods, this is the good thing about this system, I've got one pod dedicated just with my main tackle storage and I've got another pod dedicated for live baits so we've got uh, the normal tackle pod that comes with your Profish Reload and you can buy the twin tackle pod which is great for live bait fishing. The length of it at four and a half meters long is long enough to get enough speed to punch through surf. long enough to cover big distances if I'm trolling lures, trolling dead baits. But it's not too long that it's hard to manage when you're in that surf zone. So at 75 centimetres wide, the Profish Reload is an extremely stable kayak. I'm 80 kilos, but I've seen guys out there 150 kilos in some pretty adverse conditions, fully loaded up on big fish, and this kayak won't even budge. So if you're looking for a stable offshore fishing kayak, certainly a big fan of this kayak. Plastic is robust and I'm rough with kayaks. I can't ah! <laughs> and Viking kayaks stand by their product so much they put a 30 year warranty on it. So the seat position, for those long days on the water, I really love the seat position. It's a nice low seat position, um, so your centre of gravity is nice and low, you feel low and connected to the boat, the back of your legs. Your, your butt and your, and your heels are really connected with the boat. You'll notice I don't have a backrest, it comes with a backrest. I don't wear a backrest, I use a foam seat cushion. It's all I need for padding because the lower lumbar support that comes built into the kayak is more than enough. And when you're bracing against these foot pedals and driving yourself back into that lower lumbar support, you're really engaged with the kayak. Add thigh braces to that and it can really lock you into this kayak and be super responsive. I'll talk about the thigh braces in a second when we talk about surf. But I want to go over to the foot pedals. This foot pedal system, I've used a lot of kayaks over the years. This foot pedal system is probably one of the best. You can still brace to get that leg drive so the foot pedals aren't actually sliding. And then your just gentle touch of the toe mechanism will steer the kayak. The rudder is slightly different to any other rudder I've used. And like I say, over the last five plus years, I'm very used to this Viking Angler rudder system and I find it as responsive if not better than some of the longer deeper rudders that you see out there. If you're paddling over lines and weed it doesn't snag on that rudder and if you're fishing in shallow areas that rudder doesn't get caught it just kicks up and flicks back down. So the boat comes standard out of the factory with some really good accessories that you're going to need. So we'll start with the rod holders. You've got four flush mount rod holders behind you and you've got two in the cockpit. These two in the cockpit are great as you're working rod holders when you're landing a fish or changing lures. The four in the back is great if you are carrying multiple rods or if you just want to switch rods from left to right. It's great just to have everything behind you. And it frees the front area out so that you're free to cast. Yep. We got one. That was awesome. Did you see that? You've got basic things like paddle holders either side of the kayak, but out there when you're chasing fast moving fish that hit hard and they run with all your line, you need to get that um, paddle down fast. So those toggles up the front, I slide my paddle underneath those and then just deal with the fish and then move my paddle if I need to later. And the storage options are really great in this cockpit, They're really focused on everything happening in this working area to make it practical for you. You've got a centre well between your legs, six inch hatch with a bucket, 
You've also got two behind you. They're great for, I put my leader and my food usually goes behind me. Now the one between my legs, what I use that for is for all my wet tackles. So if I'm changing lures, I'll drop them in there and I'll wash it out when I get home rather than contaminating my fresh tackle. The front hatch on the Profish Reload is a nice big oval hatch. That's fantastic for storing my sea tug trolley. I can pull apart my sea tug trolley and put it inside that hatch and take it out on the water with me. It's not going to fit, bro. You needed the bag. You needed the bag. I needed the bag. Go on. Honestly, the fish storage that I go for majority of the time for offshore is the insulated fish bag. This well is a large well. There's three different fish storage options. I do have all three of them. One's the insulated cover, one's the insulated fish bag, and one is the chill pod. I don't use the chill pod as often here on the Sunshine Coast punching through the surf because it's slightly heavier and I'm catching quite long pelagics and they don't fit as well in that chill pod. So the insulated bag is more than adequate and it's a bit lighter when you're punching through the surf. I'm always running railblazer rod holders in the front. Now, why I have those railblazer rod holders, this time I've got the rod tubes, sometimes I'll run the rod holder too, but mostly I now run the rod tubes because they actually set the rods and the reels a lot higher. Why I have them in the front is they're a great place to park your rod when you're changing a lure or you're um, changing a bait or landing, even landing a fish, just park your rod right there in front of you and it drops your line right here in your seat. Now, what they're also great for is trolling. I actually prefer to troll with the rods in front of me because I can see what's going on I'm not going to hit the rods with my paddle and I can see when a fish strikes and I can easily grab that. And when you're offshore and the wind blows up and you really need to hammer down and get into a very strong paddle stroke, I will move my rods behind me, which means I can really get into a strong forward paddle stroke and not worry about hitting those rods. Having four flush mount rod holders behind you really makes that easy. Now my gaff, sometimes these rod holders are all committed so there's nowhere to put my gaff. I've added a starport up the front and I'm using the gun hold from Railblazer. That straps that gaff down nice and tight. I can paddle through the surf without that thing getting knocked off. And it's always right there when I need it and easy to undo and grab when I need a gaff to fish. There's a Spanish man. <laughs> right, now I'm going to cover some of the things that make this kayak surf friendly for me. I've been living here in Australia for a little over four years and some of the beach launches here are far more extreme than I've ever dealt with back in New Zealand. The Profish Reload definitely can handle it. The nose flare and the stable hull, the responsive hull are absolutely essential and they really do help out a lot and you don't notice how much they help until you actually get into some decent waves. The foot wells with very large scupper holes for dumping water quickly, that's critical when you punch through a wave and your cockpit's full of water, you need that water to drain fast. These scupper holes definitely do that. All of the built-in hatches are watertight, the only one that I need to add some water tightness to is the tackle pod lid. With the Profish Reload it does come with these rod grooves on the front of the kayak. What I've added to the front of this kayak is some uh, little grey toggles. That allows the rod tips to slide easily underneath that bungee. I've also added some straps to the tackle pod lid which allow me to strap those reels down. It also pulls the lid down and on the uh, insulated foam that I've put around the lid it pulls that down and seals that tackle pod up and secures the rods. Now when I'm going through the surf what I do I simply strip my reels off the rods, run the rods flat. I can run four rods on this system. If I pull off the rod holders and the sounder, put them either in the pod behind me or in the front hatch. All my reels go inside a nice little dry bag which either goes in the hatch behind me or up the front. And then the rods go down. That means everything stays nice and safe and dry. And if this kayak ever got rolled, I know nothing's gonna get damaged. It doesn't take long to strip your Railblazer rod holders off and your fish finder. I spend about 10 minutes behind the surf zone just stripping everything down. One of the most essential surf friendly additions to my fishing kayaks are the thigh braces. If you haven't seen my series of videos on surf then you need to go and have a look at them. I talk about these thigh braces and how they help a lot and they lock you into the cockpit just like you were in a sea kayak. I've come from a sea kayak paddling background and I like that being locked in the cockpit where you can lift the leading edge if you end up sideways and you just feel more engaged with the kayak and more connected and more in control when you feel locked in. Now the word lock, don't get trapped with that, you're not stuck in these, you can straighten your legs and they'll just fall straight off. That's an easy simple addition of putting 
four extra stainless saddles on. That's a stainless fitting kit that comes with the thigh braces when you buy it from Viking. Now as we speak and as I make this video, I am going through and putting together a very comprehensive kayak surf guide that will help you get through the surf and back through the surf in varying surf from big to small depending on your, uh, your capabilities. So stay tuned for that, make sure you subscribe because there is a really cool playlist coming that's going to step you through all the key things that I learned and I was taught to help me get through the surf. And I'm still learning, there's always lots to learn with surf, surf is different every time you go out, but there are some fundamental basics that are going to help you. Key additions that always goes on my kayaks is the camera booms from Railblazer. Two places that I really like to have my camera booms, one over the back over my shoulder as you see here, which is the Camera Boom 600. Now the other angle I like to catch if I'm running two cameras is up the front. I put a Starport HD up the front here and I can turn that camera a little closer to get pictures of my fish and it's also nice and close when I need to talk to the camera. I also really like that position for paddling alongside other people and filming them. I can position myself right in the action and that camera captures all the action. If you only bought one camera mount, I'd recommend the Camera Boom 600 because you can move this from the front to the back, you can take it out of your hand, uh, out of the mount and you can put it under the water. It's just such a simple system and the Railblazer Starport system, doesn't, it's not expensive, you can have a few extra Starports around the kayak, which means you can reposition your camera if you need to. So I think I've covered a lot of the things that I love about this kayak and things that might help you uh, when you're deciding to buy one. I was involved when they first launched it, I got one of the very first ones and absolutely fell in love with it. There's so much you can do with it, it's so versatile, it's a great kayak to use when you've got the family as well. If you've got the one kayak and you're taking it with you on a family trip, there's heaps of room on this kayak to throw your kids on. So that's my take on the Profish Reload from Viking Kayaks. Check it out, vikingkayaks.co.nz, that's where they make them. Also available in Viking Kayaks in Australia, USA, UK, France, they're everywhere. I'm sure you can find one wherever you are.